Hey guys, today I'm here to discuss the the uh, managing the art, science, and magic of validations in product. So I, I think uh, when when I talk about validations, I think uh, in the whole product journey, validations are a cornerstone of deciding what to build, when to build, and how to build. Right? And if 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 there is one thing that you can take away a soul of a product, it is the validation. Unless or until there is appropriate validations you will not be able to understand the user problems better you will not be able to design them better you will not be able to work on them better so in this uh, uh, talk i'll talk about various aspects of validations in a product life cycle right from a high level context into the product level um, problem uh, framing reframing to actually linking it up with solution or artifacts uh let's go through this journey and today we have a very special guest with us <coughs> who with whom i will be able to explain this story a little bit better and that is iron man so iron man is an expert in iterating products as we've seen in the movies right so but what i wanted to also bring out is that what are the various nuances that makes the validation more success or more failure right so these are the nuances with which iron man thanks to him uh, we have a good company and if he will be showing us some of the things that work some of the things that didn't work so let's go in this journey uh, but for iron man to actually work really well uh, i think we need to give him some framework some tool sets that like with him with which he becomes super powerful right and uh, this framework is basically asking questions right simple this is pure be curious element of product design or product principles so that the more you ask questions the better informed you are the better informed you are the better decisions that you can take and in order to ask these questions i will provide him another skill set that is also magical in nature which is what questions to ask when so this this whole presentation is all about what are the questions that you should be asking at what point in time so that you can get maximum benefit or you could structure your thought process so that you can do more validations and with the minimal cost and get maximum out of it so we will go in this journey step by step the first step is defining and validating a vision and to kind of pivot towards a particular concept it is about understanding con context better if you have a better control in context you will be able to define and validate a vision much better and you will be able to do things in a way, in a way that makes a lot of sense but validating a vision has two base elements right one is like the, you, you will see it in all almost all the literature that we have in product that it is about product market fit uh, no, understanding what is our north star metric what is that ideal journey what are the mission vision and values with which we will be building a product right and all of them are good good jargons as well very very highly misused in the industry but if done right they give you a very good sense of what are the things that you should be doing even more what are the things that you should not be doing right and these are the elements uh, the the basic of the the this concepts these concepts fall in basically asking some basic questions why do we exist right why do why does a product exist right what is a system boundary right uh, what will we, what of the whole problem space in which a user lives what is there where you, where you will focus right what you should be doing what you should not be doing right i think these are very very important questions and the more handle you have of these questions the better informed decisions you can take up front which are very crucial especially when you're a startup where where you're kind of investigating a new concept new idea or ideating further right so this this becomes very crucial for your product journey and but before before our iron man gets really excited and kind of shoot right left right and center and get the thing done uh, i think very important is that we kind of break this phase into two one is before starting 
and one the second phase is after starting so i'll talk about a little bit about before starting so when it's when i says before starting it is all about understanding the whole context right understanding if there are 10 different problems in this space which of those 10 problems should be fixed first why, why is this problem better to be if you're fixing this problem it is better than the other problems more often than not, what happens is that uh, we lose the overall context and hence our focus might go on to problems that might not be of that high of a priority. So that is where you have basically a concept of stack ranking. Can you talk to users? Can you talk to your ideal customers that you would be going after and ask them to kind of stack rank the problems and see what are the problems that you really want to go after with your products? And the second is mostly about like you, you've you kind of stacked rank the problem. You've understood like, okay, this is the highest uh, burning problem for a customer or a user. And now what you want to do is basically start looking at to the parallel world, right? Everything has a analogy in a physical world, in some other, in, in other, some sense, shape or form, right? Can you start looking at those analogies and looking at, how is this task done? How is this problem being fixed in nature in by people that are currently there, right? This gives you perspective, right? To, to solve a particular problem in the autos industry, this is done in this way. In the insurance world, this is done in this way. So the, the human needs, uh, the aspirations are pretty similar if you kind of look at from that lens. And that is where it helps you to build perspective that what are the various things in which this problem could be solved. And give, that gives you a, uh, this is a typical divergent, convergent kind of a uh, view of things that can you look at parallels and then can you look at what are of these parallels make sense for your context, right? Third is, is, is more about talking, right? I, I think half the world's problems could be solved if we were talking more, right? So. This is this is one of the more con more core concepts in in product design that can you also maybe talk to those potential users and understand that how important is the problem that you're going after will they be willing to pay is that is there a lot of effort time energies that is spent that you will be negating with with your product right is there a value proposition with which they you can actually delight a user right what is it that he is doing right now that could be replaced by your product and why, right? Those are the basic questions that you should be asking in your journey. And when you have started initial concepts, initial prototyping, initial talking to users, I think two things that very uh, are very crucial for the next phase is thinking about what is the core hypothesis, right? What is that you? What is what is that core market product market fit that that will gain some adoption? Right, and more often than not, I think we've we've seen some very good examples of successful companies, where where they have done a visit of Oz kind of a thing, wherein there are there is product ops who runs the show. They they kind of see the various pain points in in the small funnel. They understand, they productize it, and then replace that with an automated way, and then scale it. Right. So, can you also think in terms of what are the wizard of Oz? ways of thinking in which you can do micro experiments and then look at what are the problems if you were to scale this micro model, right? So those are a few things that, that have worked across industries. And where, uh, now, now I'll go into a very, uh, into a mode wherein we, we explore what worked, what didn't work, right? And where it worked was like, I think the prime example is is Airbnb, right? We're in three guys, they, 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 so they all happened is that there was a design conference, people, all the hotels were booked and all they decided was that let's, let's maybe bring in the mattress and the breakfast together for people to, uh, people to, uh, uh, for, for them to earn some quick money. And that quick money led to about a $25 billion thing. Right. And but this is not like one fine day, like if everything was decided and then they kind of, launched it and everything worked to perfection. I think there were bigger challenges in this journey, right? In terms of vision, the, it was very simple, right? Can we kind of give these alternatives? So they are looking at the parallel world, like what are the alternatives, right? 
they are looking at how how do you make it more feasible how do you make it more approachable how do you make it more comfortable right and it is not that they didn't face any challenges right as in when you you start solving so again if you start stack ranking problems at every level of growth you start seeing things that okay for me to grow to the next level regulation is a very important aspect right now for me i have sorted the regulation but leave people leaving the mess uh, rooms at mess is a bigger problem because now like if i have to gain traction from both both the sides this has to be sorted now if i solve for this how do i invest and communicate this message throughout the world that there is mar- uh, there is this concept right and so again like it is a step by step evolution but it all steps your vision is uh, is valid you are validating your vision you are figuring out new problems you are doubling down on the key problems that matter and then evolving into a product journey this is where it worked right now so i talked about iron man right so i will also talk about where it didn't work so where it didn't work was this is a funny incident right i think uh, these are incidents of of my imagine or imagination but it actually reflects the work that we do right so the let's go go with that right so what happened was uh so as you know iron man is 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 he he is a very good uh, he is a very good experimenter or scientist right who 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 is basically building a missile uh, for a defense system and the core feature of this particular missile is that it doesn't leave any carbon footprint like it, it, the the carbon footprint is absolutely zero somehow he has been able to manage it i don't know how uh, and it launches and the launches are a treat to watch right like it it's so much more like passion oozing out of of the launches like yeah you, you have flags and you have everything around that missile and also the sound and everything it's a, it's a it's a very engrossing or engaging experience for people who visit right and the target audience is that uh, he wants to pitch, pitch it for the generals so that tomorrow uh, they can kind of uh, show off this and get get extra credits for being uh, uh, like uh for 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 the photo credits right so again the general felt this is great right because now they they can actually bring in the political cl- bosses into the meet into these launches and uh, it would bring that whole aura of like a new missile being launched into the, into the into the space right or, or or the bases and this was a good very good uh, point right and what iron man thought is that okay i have validated this concept right and generals i've i've been talking to the generals they are my target audience they are someone who will be paying up my bills and they feel that this is the right thing in their hand because it helps them please the political bosses and that is where the money would come from so all sorted all we need to do is build this mvp deliver it to the generals and then we we are good right unfortunately what happened is that at that point of time uh, there was a crisis somewhere in the gulf and uh, the general said like can you hold on for a minute for for a few bit because i think we are a little bit a little bit busy with some other elements months pass on right and iron man goes back and kind of gives says to the team that Let, let's do this right as soon as the missile gets launched the national anthem should play right on uh, on the launch right and it should be your your the 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 steam that is the 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 steam that is coming out of the missile it should have the national colors right it should it should people should feel very highly mo- emotionally engaged like he is really passionate about it he shows her his now now he goes back to the general with this mvp plus general were amazed right this is so awesome i could see the flag colors coming down from the missile and th- they just stood up and applauded right like and there was this feeling of gratification from by iron man yes now i finally killed it but uh, but still like the general said this is awesome right this is what i want when when someone from a political class comes so that it gives him a photo opportunity so but but you still wait uh, i'll get back to you and then this cycle continues like uh, he is continuously uh, like continuously got feedback right like can we can we do some more lights uh, around the missile can we do a little bit more uh, uh, colors on the missile right or can we can we do something more right and uh, and then like that something more something more 
uh, after a continuous feedback, it continued to build, build, build. But unfortunately, they were not able to sell it, right? And after three years of continuous iteration feedback, mind you, they were talking to their target audience. They were getting the feedback from the target audience. Uh, it is as customer centric as they can be, right? And but after three years, Iron Man had to close this project. What happened there, right? If you if you look closely, right, is zero carbon footprint or national uh, display of symbols the core problem that a general has to solve? If you ask him that, if you get it, like, will you like it, right? Of course, he will like it. But is that the core problem, right? So this is where this whole product thinking comes. Can we stack rank all the problems, even though we are talking to our stakeholders, even though we are talking to our customers, but can we stack rank all the problems and then see, are you fixing or are you solving the biggest problem that he has or something that is not that important, but it is good to have, right? So this becomes very crucial in the vision state itself, wherein you are vision and the problems or what we call as a product market fit should actually match, right? Are you adding that kind of a value for which a person would be willing to pay, right? So this is the first element of the whole uh, thing that the first step is validating a vision with the context, right? Let's go further. That is the step two, which is defining and validating the OKRs. So in this, uh, I think two main elements that come into the picture. One is the OKR alignment to vision. And uh, so now we are going a little level deeper wherein you had a vision. Now from vision, you are defining the, the objectives and key results. And in that, while you're doing that, you're validating what are the objectives, what are the key results? Is it making sense uh, while like, are these the right matrix to track this? Uh, are these the right objectives that will move the needle for the vision, right? So the, you are kind of going a level deeper, but making a link with the upper level. And what are the key questions that come over here? In my mind, I've seen that this, this basically is about what problems are getting solved, right? Is this objective worth it, right? What does success look like and what value do are you creating? So if, if vision was the whole context, this becomes problem framing, reframing so that you're solving the right problems at the right time for the right users, right? And uh, this is where this next step comes, which is the validating and OKR okay and framing, framing the problems in which you're basically looking at I call it like, how do you avoid building stupid stuff, right? And this is very important because uh, the more you have control over here, the better, the, the lesser mistakes that you would do in spending dev bandwidth on things that don't matter, right? So again, how do you uh, avoid building stupid stuff? How do you, how do you not over engineer, right? Because what happens is that your objectives can be like really, really can get really, really crazy within no time, right? But this is where if you have some levels of checks and balances, how do you avoid over engineering? And how do you align with other teams? And how do you kind of do more pivots and help you uh, more do more lean experiments? And why this is, this is the why part of it. And when it comes to the how, it is about understanding the what from data and understanding the why from user research, reviews, customer complaints, and triangulating your problem space and framing your problem space well. And that is where one of the key things that I've learned, I, I've, I've actually taken it from one of the presentations uh, that happened in OLX about balancing risk uh, with truth curves. This has been a very crucial part in my product journey that the cost of the experiments and the truth of the learning, right? The more comfortable you get, the easy it becomes for you to uh, prototype. Like for example, in some cases where the risk or uh, the level of unknowns are not that high, even a conversation works. Somewhere where the risk is uh, pretty uh, pretty normal, over there a prepare prototype works. But as in when you go towards a live product, the risk of unknowns also increases. And hence you have to do those experiments, you have to do those prototypes to get more knowns so that you can kind of do the right thing for the users. 
and that is where this comes in wherein we are talking about where problem framing really worked right i think i'll give you two example right i, I think uh, like, like in the previous time uh, i'll give you where it worked and where it didn't work right and uh, it should be fun so this one is about uh, again same iron man and iron man is basically he is back in time and what he ha what happened is that uh, this is this is like when the lifts were invented right and uh, they were installed in a place and while they were being installed over there um, the 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 building the people in the building were really frustrated it takes a lot of time to travel it takes a lot of time to travel and um, fortunately for them iron man traveled back in time and he went to the building and uh, he was talking to all the different gentlemen over there and ladies over there that uh, what is your problem so he everyone started complaining about it. it takes a lot of time to go up i live on the fifth floor and it is like so slow and everyone was like okay let's let's they were giving him ideas right uh, iron man let's do this uh, i will give you 100000 Uh, put the most important like we see a, a rocket in your shoes right can you put that in another lift and it would go up immediately people were really fascinated like yes let's do it iron man like he took a step back he said like let's do something interesting he observed uh, what happened in the lifts where from the time when he came right there was something unique about the lifts over there and something that was a miss over here he went there and he brought a big mirror and placed it in the mirror in the lift all of a sudden people would go in and without no time they would be out on the floor right what happened all of a sudden people were looking in the mirror and they didn't they did lost count of time right and now the problem that was the speed of the lift became a perception problem that was solved right so it is all about how do you frame your problems in a way that a cost you provide value to the customer with minimal cost right there are there would be always be 100 ways to solve a problem but how do you figure out what is that right problem what is that that nuance that can really help you frame your problems better and when you talk about framing there is also the other part of it where it didn't work right and uh, this again is about iron man <laughs> so i I'll, i'll quote mars Ma maslow's hammer over here when when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail right and that is where what happened with iron man in this case so what happened was iron man was like again he is a scientist he is an engineer right uh, and he call he is called in by a reputed space agency to work on an anti gravity pen and that could work even on 4g you know ball point pen right it can't work in in 0g because like it it functions as a function of gravity so what happens is that iron man like he he toiled put in uh, asked for millions of dollars of investment and made like a special ink that had a different viscosity and because of that it would it would really really work in all the environments super super excited about it because it helps him like it it was like really unique right and uh, that is where uh, the uh, the competitor like meanwhile there was an other competitor in space agency they used a pencil all of a sudden right like all the million dollars of investment gone away in 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 rain just because we were not pre from framing the problems well we were trying to solve a problem by by narrowing down the context and then trying to solve for it versus understanding and framing reframing the problem right and that is where this this story comes in the third step is like you you've done a lot of understanding of the concept of validations in problem uh, in vision uh, vision validation we have looked at pro, pro, framing of problems and now we are looking at defining and validating initiatives when it comes to initiatives the three uh, the two main elements that are there is a problem opportunity assessment discovery of solution and experiment design so these are the various steps that that are typically followed in this and then the key questions that come into the picture over here is what are the variants of problems of 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 solutions that we are trying to solve right how do we align teams better 
uh, to get better better support right and this is where uh, this is uh, where it becomes very critical next uh, as we go further uh, there is this defining initiatives and we are in the link between the problem space and the solution space is managed and uh, the first part is uh, framing customer pain points and uh, if you look closely right this is this is following up from the previous step of okr validation into going a little level deeper which is your problem opportunity assessment which is all about questions the thing that the same toolkit that we provided iron man one is what problems are you trying to solve how big is the problem how unique is the problem and what impact will have right this is the the, the core crux of having a backlog of problems and then kind of sizing it so that you are fixing the biggest problem first next comes the discovery of solutions with customers and stakeholders i think uh, we as uh, product managers are very guilty of holding the product uh, in our own purview i, I think uh, more i have realized over time it is all about co creation and that is where this comes as discovery of solution i think what are the best ways to solve a problem how do we know if this indeed solves a problem right this is about Uh, of the stack rank problems that you have figured out for your OKRs, for your objectives, for your vision, what are the problems? What are the solutions that fit that problem space? Uh, and sometimes it may be a combination of solutions. And then, how do you validate that this indeed solves that problem? And the last is from this knowledge, okay, uh, what, how what is your comfort level for you to basis the truth curve? what is your comfort level or what do you want to do do you want to do prototypes do you want to do uh, experiment design do you want to launch products do you want to uh, just talk to people right so basis that from the knowns can you define what are the elements that should go into your product road map right away what are the things that you need to discover in the medium term what are the things that you don't even know about in the long run right so this is how you you kind of move in that direction validating one step at a time and uh, now we'll take the the storyline of like what worked what didn't work this actually is uh, the story is really close to my heart uh, i worked uh, as a director of product for uh, wink music wink music is uh, one of the largest music players in india and uh, that is where i when i was brought in uh, the number of streams uh, of music streams per month was stuck right and retention was also rec- uh, not that great so what what i did over there was uh, we we looked at we wanted to kind of uh, people were very willing to kind of invest in the platform so that we can acquire more users but the problem was the leaky bucket right the more we we burnt money the more churn it had right and uh, that is where it was very getting very difficult so what we did was that we actually lived a life of a user we understood what are the problems what are the what is the context in which he is using the product what is the problems that are he is facing what are the various things that need to be validated in this journey so what we did is in this whole journey we also looked at the various funnels into the whole product of the whole product starting from acquisition activation and retention so in acquisition what we figured is that um, i think this was like after a lot of digging data understanding users and then looking at like what are the channels which are not performing well right uh, what are so over there we also figured that people were actually confused when they landed up on the home page they couldn't understand like should i be clicking on one of the tiles should i be playing the music or what should i be doing like and and there we did some experiment like you will play the first music after some time if you have not done anything that backfired people were like oh like wow, i didn't say anything to it why is the why is the music player playing right so uh, we kind of rolled that rolled that back but i think this was a lot of experimentation and learning of what is that first user experience uh, that we should provide to the customer so again we brought in the regional options more in the face so that we can kind of address that market which was not comfortable with hindi and uh, english music in the activation we figured that the the one of the major problem was the time played between the new, two main songs two songs and the reason by for that was that we wanted to play the highest bit rate and that is a good thing that because you you want to kind of give the best quality but the networks at that point of time 
they were not in that state right so the if you play one song it would stop and then you would start again after that uh, so what we did was we we kind of managed the whole experience you we, we kind of started starting from average bitrate and then improving or degrading as per the networks uh, over there we started prefetching the thing we started promoting radios wherein one after the other the songs were curated and uh, even then the the things were not moving much in tier 2 tier 3 cities where we actually like when we further talked to the customers we found out that they were using side loaded music right and uh, the thing with that was that uh, there were shops or places where they could just load the music into their song for songs into their phones and they would just listen right for them music player didn't even make sense so what we did is we we started including the side loaded music as well into the player so that they can get exposed to the various music that is already there on the platform and that worked that really really worked in bringing the that segment of the user base which was not on the platform and we started doing in terms of uh, we 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 kind of fixed the notification funnel there was there were a lot of things like the the delivery rates were really poor right and we pivoted on retargeting rather than acquisition that reduces the lot reduced a lot of customer acquisition cost and we invested in performance at low bandwidth so these were one of few things they all like when you look backwards you can all connect the dots and say that okay this is lot about like the things that you did but a lot of it was also validating while while we are while we were jogging while we were looking at customers on the roads people listening to music people listening to music in different settings right uh, people using phones uh, different types of phones right all that came together while while we were discovering and validating a lot of these concepts and the outcome was that uh, i think we uh, we we were able to do about 3x of of the streams that were there and post that like a lot of investment also went in acquisition and the grow, the graph the growth path has has been strong since then so this is where when you validate the whole problem solution space and then work out solutions that mapping it really works right and and bringing all of this together i think uh, the key message over here is uh, one validate and understand the context if possible stack rank the problems and give them and give your opp- opportunity to your vision to work second is once you have understood the context better in terms of validating it look at what are the problem space how do you frame it how do you reframe it how do you avoid overkilling it how do you avoid over engineering it and then looking at the match between a problem and a solution wherever possible how do you how do you stay out of biases how do you stay out of the whole uh, lenses that you have in terms of product development and validating those ideas and then while you do this i think one it is very also also very important that you remember that truth curve in your mind that it is not about for everything you would do a hell amount of research right it is the function of known and unknowns that you should decide that what level of validations is important and avoid uh, analysis paralysis and keep it really simple and uh, of course like basis the risk you define the fidelity of exp- uh, experiment and to bring it all together like wherever possible think from a user perspective and not your own perspective you have lived your life you have you have had your own experiences that these experiences define who you are how you see the world it may not hold true for the whole world or the target audience for whom you are building products right so th- these things are very important to kind of take you through that journey so this this was the this was a talk on like how do you the art science and magic of validations in in product um, product uh, management i hope you liked it thank you